the sound is down. Are we live? Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. My phone always lags, so I think we're live. Yeah, we're You're here. For <laughs> Pirates pleasure. <laughs> Which, Samantha, you have the original one. I'm really jealous. I love the gold <laughs> font. Oh, yeah. And it's like, and, yeah. Yeah. Embossed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Desiree has a hardback. I do. I Fancy. I'm more jealous of that. Okay, that is gorgeous. <laughs> Courtesy of Mount Prospect Public Library. <laughs> what is, oh, is it stamped? <laughs> yeah, it, it's on the top, and it's got the discard thing on the inside. Hi, Natasha. Natasha's here. Okay, well, I think three out of the four of us just finished this today, so we are fresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, you did this last week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We. So, do you finish, Samantha? Day. Yeah, I finished like an hour ago. I was a race. I was watching your stories. <laughs> Me and her were like neck and neck. And, uh, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, well, is this really it. happening at this point? And she's like, yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we'll go around and introduce everybody. Um, so we'll start with Desiree and what you're currently reading. Okay, so I'm Desiree from Desiree Alicia and Genki Reader on Instagram. I'm currently reading Holiday by Monica Murphy. Uh, it's Lacey's recommendation. It's a small town sort of grumpy sunshine romance, and I'm enjoying it so far. It's really fun. He's very grumpy, and I, I'm really into that. <laughs> so. Cool, cool. Um, I'm Samantha from Books with Samantha. Um, I just finished this book like an hour ago, but before that, I was reading Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfort. It's a sapphic Christmas mm -hmm. romance. I think Jess, you've read this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. this was also a recommendation from Lacey. She gave it to me last year as a Christmas present, and I never got around to it. <laughs> so it's a Pride and Prejudice retelling, a fake dating, and it also has like a grumpy sunshine trope. I am really liking it, like a lot, a lot, but I'm I only series. like 200 pages in. So I'm Christy and um, on Instagram, I'm Christy Reads A Lot. And I'm currently reading, what was I just reading? Uh, the Wedding by Julie Garwood, which comes oh. after The Bride. You really do read a lot too. <laughs> you read yeah, so I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Did you read? You read The Secret, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did you read The Bride? Yep. Mm -hmm. And this okay. one takes place like 17 years after The Bride. And the hero of this book was raised with the hero in The Bride. Oh. So they kind of connect, but like 17 mm -hmm. years later. <laughs> mm, I think you like mentioned in the last live show that they're like related, but not so you can read them separately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. why are they even yeah. in the same series? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Chrissy, I just want to say your Goodreads shelves are so organized and I appreciate uh -huh. it. Whenever <laughs> I want a specific shelf, like, oh, I want a novella, I'll be like, let me go on Christy's uh -huh. Goodreads and see what she has. Well, thanks. <laughs> I use that all the time. <laughs> I admire I people that. who have good <laughs> shelves because, like, if you go to my Goodreads, I have like four shelves, and one of them has two books, and the rest have zero because I started, <laughs> and then I was like, "Nah, <laughs> I gave up." <laughs> Otherwise, I forget like what books have tropes and stuff, so I'm like, I have to mm -hmm. make lists. <laughs> I use I them. Swing it. I just stock your Goodreads. Hey, it works. <laughs> I am currently reading Seduce Me a Sunrise. Have you guys yes. read this one? Oh, I it's love it. my favorite. It. I love it. It is so I've been putting it off so long because I love them so much in book one. And I'm like, I'm going to love it so much that yeah. I don't want to read it yet. But I finally am reading it. And it is amazing. The Mutual Pining. I just love Mutual Pining. So, yep. Yeah. That one's good. Is the Brothers book then the third one? He's the last one. Oh, really? Because they, is it with the governess? Mm -hmm. He's the fourth book. Okay, because like, they're already four. setting. There's five. The fourth, yeah, because the third oh. is um the sis the like I think her name's Poppy or something like with the billionaire type hero. Oh yeah, the last yeah. One, the youngest sister. I haven't read hers. Yeah, yet. with all the animals, hers is really good too. Oh okay, yeah, we've met them, but they've yeah. already set up like his romance. He just met his love interest in this book. Yeah, 
So I thought that was like setting up for the next book. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, his goes pretty like his uh, whole character journey like goes throughout the whole series and it's like so good. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to read more. And that audiobook narrator is so good. She narrates so many audiobooks for historical romances. I don't remember which what one is this. Um, let me look real quick. Is she Why British? Is She's British. I think she did the is it Rosalind Landor or just yeah, Jean? I think that's her name. Yeah. Let me they seem to like alternate that. between those two. <laughs> yes, Rosalind Landor. And she I think does she did Bridgerton? No. Was it a guy who did Bridgerton? I don't remember. I didn't listen to those on audio, I'm not sure. But she does like all of these. Oh, she did the Smith Smith series. That's what I know her from. Yeah. The Julia Quinn. Yeah. She does so many. And she's really good. Does she do really Stacey like Reed? Because there's like only one historical female author narrator that I can think of at the moment. I did not like oh. Stacey Reed's audiobook yeah. narrator. I was gonna say, I don't, say, I don't think it was that lady. Okay. No. <laughs> I listened to my darling news and I was like, I cannot listen to book two. I did not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Desiree, were you listening to this like through I was listening to text to speech, the British okay. version of text to speech. And what, uh, is that? what is that? I didn't know that was so, thing. So if you go into your accessibilities in uh, your iPhone, there's a part where it'll read you text to speech and you can pick what dialect of English you want. So it has Australian, Ireland, the UK and America. And I picked uh, the UK and it sounds like an older British gentleman and it sounded great. <laughs> Can you yeah, yeah. choose the sound like the speed? You can choose the speed. It's not gonna sound like amazing, but like if you leave it at like one time speed, it's really easy to understand. I had it at two, so it's a little bit you know janky, but like at one time speed, I think it's perfect because then you can like distinguish what they're reading. And also I think as the years go on, it gets a little bit better that it almost feels like he's like taking a breath and like pausing. So the intelligence is getting there. Cool. Yes, all our romance gear. Go buy Jessica's. Um, yeah. Bonfire. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Her bonfire. Yeah. I'm really and proud of this one. <laughs> yeah, I have I'm wearing one. one yeah. yeah, I like that one. But yeah, we're all wearing it. I always have to pull it out for our live shows. <laughs> um, we have thoughts. So what did everybody rate the book? Let us know in the comments what you rated it, and then we'll we'll all say our ratings. So Desiree, I think you rated it the lowest, but that's fine. <laughs> Look, okay. So I, I'm giving it a three, but I'll like round it up to a 3.5. But this is mostly like I say every live show based on the fact that I read it too fast. <laughs> so like my like feelings on it get very jumbled and whatnot. And uh, for books like this. Uh, if it doesn't have an audiobook and I have to read it manually, physically, whatever you want to say, um, I really do need to read it by myself. Otherwise, it's just not going to work out. But I felt like it was really like a lot, even just in general, when I was uh, listening to it. That's like there's a plot line here, and then we like diverged and we had another plot line here, and there's like 15 characters you have to memorize, and then there's another plot line. So there was a lot <laughs> for me. But yeah, so 3.5, bumping it up. Okay. Um, all right. My turn. Whew. Guys, I was torn about this book, okay? This book was a journey, okay? The first half, I was like, oh, this is five stars. This is the best book I've ever read in my entire life. And then one tiny little itty-bitty thing happened. Well, not itty-bitty, but something happened in the book that I didn't particularly like. So I ended up giving it a four stars, but I really enjoyed it. I feel like it was so dramatic and romantic and just lovely. I really enjoyed it. It was quite a journey though. <laughs> I gave it um four stars on Goodreads. That's like four and a half for me because I loved how adventurous it was and just like nonstop action and like all the pirates. Like it delivered on pirates from like the first chapter and it just like didn't lit up. <laughs> so I loved it. I think reading this after The Pirate and the Pagan made me absolutely love it because this is what that was supposed to be. It even had the same tropes. Like, I was like, I called it, we're going to go spoilery, but I called it from the beginning that he was both of them. Yes. I, I, the knew, pagan. It. I, did that I that book. knew it. 
And I texted Desiree and Desiree's like, no, they're cousins. And I'm like, no, they're the same. <laughs> I, I went like, a little shocked. further and I was like, wait a second. Wait, how many of you knew from the beginning that they were the same? And how many of you were surprised? I knew from the beginning that it was the same guy. I guessed it. But I, I think it's because we read that book. <laughs> Christy, you were surprised? Yeah, I was surprised. Okay, because Desiree was too. Desiree was like, what? She, yeah. But I like him with the cousin. And I was like, how far are you? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> But I gave it five stars. I love it. Well, a four and a half because of the same issue Samantha had. Yeah. 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 So the issue that I had with the book, I mean, we can just say it real quick. I despise the fact that the villain of the story, other than like the other pirates, was the Indians. That the Indians killed her parents and they mm-hmm. literally lived like on a plantation. It just seemed really... Um, tactless I didn't like it it had no bearing to the story there was no purpose to it um and like was underlining racist in my opinion but I just didn't like it if that one part of the book wasn't in there I would have given it five stars but when I read that little part I told Desiree I was like I'm about to DNF this book like that is gonna (laughs) fill everything for me but I still power through (laughs) and it was confusing because then later on in another part of the book she's talking about um like the history of like these evil white people pushing you know the indigenous people to the west and so i was like so is she calling it out like and stating the fact you know the writer and so i was like what is she doing here you know because i'm like yeah they were pushing people out and you know killing all of them but then they're the evil villains right yeah exactly so it's like what are you trying to what are you saying right and it didn't contribute to the story whatsoever there was no purpose for that her mother could have died and her still be afraid of the dark, but like that part right. of it was just pointless. Right. Yeah, I literally didn't think that was going to be the reason that she was afraid of the dark. I thought she was going to have some like traumatic experience being locked in a closet or something mm-hmm. and like nobody found oh, her no. for like, like a whole yeah. day, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> she's like, I can't be locked in, but I, yeah. <laughs> that was the reason. Okay. But yeah. now. But now, okay, yes, Clarissa, when she waved at him, I had a very brief moment of doubt that they weren't the same person. I didn't see his face. Briefly. And then I was like, no, this has to be it. And I thought it was crazy because me and Desiree (laughs) had totally (laughs) different opinions. So I fast forwarded to the epilogue just real quick. Oh, no. <laughs> no, because I knew it and I needed to make sure that I was right because I didn't want to read it if they were not the same person. I she's so like, okay, I'll fast forward. And then she's like, okay, well, the ending's cute. Maybe I'll go back and <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did. Well, I was like, she knocked him out, and like, how did he get to the other place so quickly? That's what like, I'm trying to she... figure out. And I was oh, like, that... yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I thought he was unconscious, and then all of a sudden he's up and putting on a show with like a different lady to make her jealous. <laughs> I'm like, that there's no way. Seventeen, whatever, <laughs> and like he just like sped past her. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> I think his first his first mate, whatever he's called, I think he like distracted her and like was mm-hmm. very slow when he was like taking her to the tavern so yeah, that yeah. Mm-hmm. could get there. Okay. I think that okay. was. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I thought though that he was going to fake his death at the end. Like when the pirate blew up, I was like, oh, that's his way to like now not have to worry about the double life. <laughs> and he'll be like, oh, Hawk's yeah. dead. And now he's Lord Cameron. I did not see it coming though that he was working for the crown. Or like the not the crown, but like the American version. The no, I just thought it was <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. No, yeah, I didn't think he was working for the crown either. No, and then they killed off what black Blackbeard was that his name? Yeah, Blackbeard, yeah, oh, yeah. He was the good pirate. Why are you killing him off? <laughs> I liked how they had like the real pirates like sprinkled in throughout the story because I watched that pirate documentary on Netflix Mm -hmm. so when I saw all their names I was like oh this is so it delivered on the pirate-ness like it really went there unlike the other book we read well and like with that documentary it was all about how they were formed because of the crown and then they were turned pirates because the crown was like never mind we don't need you anymore now you're illegal And, like, they talked about that in here. So I thought it was really cool how it was, like, historical. What's the documentary? Yeah, I love so that I can part. watch that later. I've never seen that. The the First Kingdom? Or what was it called, Jessica? Yeah, I, I, something like that. I think I only Just, watched the first mm-hmm. episode or two. I don't remember how many episodes there were. Yeah, it's either on Netflix or on Hulu. It's, like, the First Kingdom, the Last Kingdom. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Just how, like, the origin of pirates. Mm-hmm. Cool. It, 
Yeah. It's a documentary, but then they have actors like acting out the scenes as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really good. Yeah. Did she remind you of Shanna at all? A little. <laughs> Not as bad. But I'm like, you're being so annoying. How she like snuck <laughs> out and then got captured. And like things that she did were causing bad things in the plot to happen because she was being annoying. But to be fair, she was kidnapped. So yeah, like, that's I, I was like, she's an independent woman. She's trying to get free and she was kidnapped. <laughs> I kind of understood it. But one of my biggest pet peeves is when a heroine hits the hero. Because... I just, uh, it really irks me because like if a hero were to hit a heroine, everybody would lose their mind, but nobody really says anything when the hero heroine hits the hero. And like, she really had no reason to hit him because he wasn't yeah. violent with her whatsoever. So that's what reminded me of Shanna because that's how Shanna was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she like knocked him out like out of the blue. <laughs> she clocked it. I was like, why? <laughs> you could have just snuck out or waited yeah. till like it was dark or well, you I know you scared of the dark, but you know what I mean. Wait it for <laughs> Yeah, I love that she knew how to fight too. Like when she picked up the sword in the beginning and actually like killed the dude, I was like, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh yeah, the hero from Shanna. He's just so sweet and patient. I don't know how he dealt with her, but <laughs> that's a thick book. I don't know if I could read it if like don't she read it. Don't this girl. It's hard. Okay, I'll just admire the cover. The covers are pretty. <laughs> but it was so frustrating that she would like say such bad things about Hawk when he was so sweet to her. And then mm -hmm. she lied to Cameron and was like, he raped me. And then he knew though, because he's Hawk and Cameron. And I'm just like, you're so mean lying like that about him. And then he was well, I think really she heard just, about it. Yeah, I think she just didn't want to be with Cameron. Like, and so she was trying to make up excuses and like, oh, he like attacked me. So like, I can't be with you now. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like traumatized. Because <laughs> she ended up like defending the pirates to Cameron in a way. Yeah. Even though she talked crap about them, like with Hawk, she was defending them and saying that mm -hmm. he was different from like the other pirates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was such a good hero. I honestly loved him, and like the mm -hmm. consent book, how he was like so patient with her. I freaking love this book. <laughs> yeah, I could. Well, see, I was like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I could see the only issue I would see people having is when Lord Cameron first like mm -hmm. gets with her. She's asleep. But oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe you should have waited until maybe she was awake. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Christy? Oh, I was gonna say since I didn't see it coming, like that they were the same guy. I was really confused, like halfway in when she starts falling for Cameron, because like in the beginning I was comparing it to like Sea Ruin and like Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean, like mashup. And then I was like, okay, is this really going like Sea of Ruin, like? <laughs> Because now she's falling for Cameron and she still loves like pirate boy over here. <laughs> like what's going to happen? <laughs> like who is she ending up with? Like I had to read the back and be like, who is the hero of this book? <laughs> like what is happening? <laughs> I texted Sam and I was like, this girl has no loyalty, zero loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> it's like she just got off the boat. You know, and then yep. she, she she's with her husband that she just met and <laughs> and she like jumps into with this other guy like that quick, but you supposedly yeah. had already admitted to yourself that you love the pirate. So I was like, okay. Right. <laughs> but then when she no went way. back to talk, she's like, Wait, but I love my husband now. And you're just like, you can't make up your mind. But yeah, that yeah. flip flop was a lot for me. I was like, I yeah. <laughs> Cousins, I had this brief thought. I was like, maybe they're gonna end up with both of them, right? <laughs> Your cousins, but no. Like you. maybe they're doing things different in '89. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting married, so yeah. Here is this published. This is very like telenovela. Like someone had asked like for a recommendation for like a sweeping dramatic romance, and mm. I feel like this is that. Yeah. Like I don't yep. really read uh new historical romances that have this much drama that are just dramatic mm -hmm. and maybe i feel like people don't like it because there can be plot holes but it just makes for like in good entertainment okay like yeah entertainment this book was a journey <laughs> i feel but like it's it like oh go ahead what no what's the first book is this a second book this is, like second. this is the second one 
So I was like reading it and apparently this is part of her whole like Cameron saga. She has six books and this, the first book is his great grandparents. Those people he like talks to in the paintings on the wall, Jazzy and James. Like, and so the first book is their book and it's like 1600s. And then this book is his. And then the third book is like his grandson. Like it goes to revolutionary war time. And then oh, I have the third she, book. then she has another series that connects with this and it's a continuation of them, but like in civil war, like this Cameron family. And it's like the oh. ones that are like one war gray, <laughs> one war blue, one road west or something. They all connect. Yeah. Huh. The third book. Oh, that is so interesting. Love not a rebel. Yeah, so I, yeah that's pretty Is it awesome in hardcover? Yeah. yeah. The, th- the right, first yeah. one so was $13. Been... So I didn't get it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but she has like 200 years with this Cameron family that her books cover, That's amazing. which I thought was like super epic saga. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. Cause I have the first book and they have the same kind of cover design. Yeah. But I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Cool. What were you going to say, Jessica, before I asked about this first book? Hmm. I don't remember. <laughs> Let me think. Okay. Oh, that's where I like your pan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go away with Logan. Hmm. Which promise? She made him a lot of <laughs> promises throughout the yeah, book. The first one, I think, the one that says like she would do anything for him, right. yeah, anything he wants. Although she never kept that promise. No. And it's not I a fair promise. Like, girl, we need to learn how to negotiate. We don't just negotiate anything he wants for a candle. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't keep up with her promises. She made so many. I... <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. So she does. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wasn't that when he thought he was going to die? I just love that whole scene where, like, they were on the beach and, like, that little, like, bungalow thing and, like, talking about what happened if he died. And he was ready to die for her. <gasps> that was, yeah, so it was really sweet. <laughs> yeah. So romantic. Even though he had to act like this big bad pirate in front of everybody. And of course, she's like, oh my gosh, of course you're this big bad pirate. I knew it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, you know the real him. Stop. <laughs> it's annoying when they do that. I it's do hate when heroines do that. Right? <clears throat> the only thing is, is like, how did she not know that they were the same person? Like, literally the only difference was that he had a beard. That was the <laughs> only <laughs> difference. <laughs> he also had a wig as Cameron. Oh, the powdered wig? Yeah. He wore the mm-hmm. wig? Yes, then he never <laughs> took his clothes off. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. Because, yeah, they were oh, doing yeah. it and he had his shirt on and everything. Yeah. 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 Which, like, she only talked about, like, their silver eyes, like, matching. And so, like, she didn't really describe him too much. So I guess she was just focused on, like, the eyes. Hmm. And that's why I thought they were different people because she Same. was like, oh, yeah, silver <laughs> eyes. So I'm like, oh, so the rest mm-hmm. of them looks different. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like trying to imagine like them sleeping together and he has a powdered wig on. <laughs> that, that ruined everything. Stop. I thought he took it off. It gets funnier the more I think about it. Stop I it. know. Yeah. No. <laughs> Oh um, but he did mention that like the then when she saw hawk again she's like oh my gosh seeing them in the same day they look exactly alike mm-hmm. oh twins. Exactly. right so like when she yeah. first went from hawk to cameron she's like oh they like look related but then she mm-hmm. went both from cameron back to hawk she's like oh they look really alike mm-hmm. and i thought it was really funny when she realized the beard was fake and she got super mad <laughs> yeah what <laughs> and then she finally figured it out yeah. And he's like, oh, it fell off, didn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> at least they didn't make it so like he grew a beard. I don't know how they did it in the Pirate and the Pagan, didn't you? Skim read that, Samantha. How did oh, they do how it? he was different? Yeah, because oh, wouldn't she go like back and forth and back and forth between them? Yeah, that she thought he was his brother. 
I can't remember what the differences were, but it was also incredibly dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that book was awful. <laughs> this just did it so much better. It really wow. did. This is what I thought that one was going to be. I don't think there was ever, like, a dull moment. Maybe mm -hmm. when they were at his island. Was it an island that he owned? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that was the only yeah. time I was, like, it was sweet, though. That was the only time, like, there was no action, though. And then it was just, like, constantly. I thought it was kind of funny, the, the island. Because the part that I remember is, like, her being spooked by the butler who's just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> like, in the shadows or whatever. <laughs> she, like, she's like, why is he just standing there? I didn't, like, hear him when we walked past. <laughs> just waiting for us so i thought it was funny but yeah that one was sweet yeah because i loved when they were there and he was like um when she when he's like you know my cousin's coming to get you and save you and stuff and she's like i don't want to go and so he's like do you want me to get you out of the betrothal like i can make this end you know he was like ready to save her <laughs> and i think it was fun the marriage by proxy is that what it's called mm-hmm mm -hmm. Because I don't see that a lot in books. And I remember, I don't remember if it was one of our live shows we talked about, but like someone can stand in for you and you can get married when you're not even there. Yeah. So that was cool to see that in here. I think it was, um, I think we did talk about it in one show that I was in, mm -hmm. but I forget what book it was. It was a Julie Garwood. I just don't remember which one. <laughs> but yeah. Mm, I remember there was like a Netflix series about Queen... Mary, the Queen of the Scots. And I think she had like a marriage by proxy or something like that too. That just seems weird to me. Well, I mean, it makes sense if you're being betrothed to someone. Like think of like royal <laughs> marrying royalty. They live on different sides of the continent. So they won't see each other and you don't know if you're going to make that trip. So that marriage of proxy makes sense because you don't really, you don't live in the same area as them. But wouldn't you like move to them to be together to be married? True. But maybe that gives you <laughs> some type of protection on your travels, like for this. I don't know. Maybe. I've only ever seen it when they're on a boat though, for the marriage by proxy. Like someone's coming over by boat and then they do the the proxy wedding. I've never seen it where like they're traveling um on land to do it. Yeah. I haven't read a Catherine Cutler book yet. I'm scared. I have like read a one. whole series of them and I haven't even. <laughs> yeah, I read her like gothic one. Her gothic romance. What is it good? No. Oh. No. <laughs> I mean, for the gothic <laughs> elements, not sure, things. but like not for the romance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was very drama filled though, too. <laughs> yeah. I prefer for instead of marriage by proxy, I prefer um, mail order brides much more than the, because mm -hmm. they usually do like pin pen pal whatever's and then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, or they like answer an ad so they know what they're know getting what they're into. getting into yeah. Uh, but yeah I've, I'm not a huge fan of the marriage by proxy as a trope but I've seen it a couple times and just yeah it's not my yeah, favorite I've, I feel like every time I see it the heroine doesn't know she's getting married and so like I feel like yeah. don't you need their permission like what are you doing because I read another one and she was in England and like her brother like married her off to some guy and because the guy was like about to die or something. And then she doesn't even know about it. And they're like, hey, you need to go to Scotland. Like your husband's up there. <laughs> and she's like, um, what? <laughs> Is that a Grace Burroughs? That sounds familiar. No, it's not. I'm trying to remember what it was, but I can't remember. I feel like I've just like, I've read that synopsis somewhere, but I haven't read it the book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in this one, she had signed something. She was like, oh, yeah. but I sign papers all the time for my father. And I was like, is right. that really realistic, though? Like, why would you, the woman have to, the daughter, be right. signing? I don't know. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what would she be signing that she, you know, is so, oh, okay, another paper. Yeah. <laughs> right. Unless they're like, mm. we're counting your luggage for your boat. Like, here's your uh, passenger <laughs> like ticket. <laughs> yeah. Sign here, ma'am. <laughs> I th I took it as like her father was older and maybe didn't know how to run the household as well. So she kind of like did it for him. That's what I thought it was. How old was she? Okay, 20. So I went back and looked when Desiree asked because she texted me and asked. She yeah. just was finishing school. So I thought she was like 18. But uh -huh. in the beginning of the book, it says that the hero is 30, that he's like lived three decades and that he was 10 when she was born. So she has to be 20. I, th okay. I, I took thought into this. 
Where did it? Because I was thinking she was like 16 because they mentioned school. No. Yeah. Right. So when I got to a certain point, they were talking about Brandy and like, you know, all this other stuff. I'm like, how old is this girl? <laughs> I, yeah. I, she's doing. I think Hawk says your betrothed was like 10 when you were born or something like that. So okay. it has to be 20. I like that yeah. better than her being like 16, like a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> It would have been kind of like cool though if she was like in the beginning if she was 16 and she was doing all that sword fighting that would have been pretty sick but like mm -hmm. after that <laughs> no yeah <laughs> I do feel like like the prologue was a little hard to get into and it reminded me of the pirate and the pagan prologue because it was like throwing us into these random characters and I'm like are we supposed to know who these characters are we just like get thrown into the plot and I have no idea who these are because yeah, I like, had to oh. actually read the first couple pages twice because mm -hmm. I was so unengaged with it. But the second time around, I was like, you know what? I think I like him because <laughs> the part where he like goes down to all the paintings and he's just like, okay, so you said this, this, and this. All right. Yeah. Okay. Conversation over. All right, dad, you told me. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Like, okay. I like him. And then I thought that it was going to be, cause I didn't read like the synopsis I just went in I thought it was going to be about him like throughout the book as himself I know it says pirate or whatever on the cover I wasn't paying attention <laughs> to that so <laughs> I was like okay I like him already and then we jump into there being the pirates so I was lost for a hot second but I think that's why I liked him as husband more than the pirate because of that I I tend to like people for dumb things and then like I stick to it <laughs> You will learn this about me in the future. There'll be like one thing that happens and it's very like minuscule that'll like set it off and be like, he's my man. That's it. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> and like nothing else. And then I'm loyal throughout the book. But you like, did yeah. really liked Lord Cameron. You did. Yeah, I did. I did like Lord okay. Cameron. <laughs> I feel like the reason she fell in love with Lord Cameron so quickly is because she was already in love with hawk but like his title gave her like reason to like not permission but like she was always holding back because he was a pirate so yeah. since he had the title it felt more like secure yeah and she was trying to keep the promise to her father too yeah. which he was doing as well like with his father like the whole betrothal thing mm -hmm. yeah. and like she that she that was afraid time. of him sorry. oh sorry that he was afraid of like him being a pirate just because it meant you know, he was in danger like this whole time. Oh yeah, that too. That too. Yeah, because there was that whole scene where she's like sitting by herself, thinking, "Is this like going to be my future? I'm sitting here with a bunch of kids, and then he's going off to the gallows right. or whatnot." Yeah, so she would be scared for the rest of her life if that was her choice. Right. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like is, <clears throat> I mean, it was cool that she could like sword fight and stuff, but half the time she just got herself into so much trouble. And it was like her fault that the <laughs> pirates died. It was her fault that those horses got hurt just cause she was being stupid. Like with no plan, <laughs> no plan. Why would you literally get docked in a pirate haven and be like, oh yeah, these oh, other pirates are gonna save me. Like, no, Ugh, I just can't. You know what this reminded me of? This reminded me of the reason that a lot of people don't like uh, Claire in Outlander, um, at least mm -hmm. in the first book. <laughs> and I like when I thought about it again, I was like, OK, I guess I see what you mean, because I like Claire. But I okay. like I saw all the points that like frustrated people about her because she was trying to get home or whatever. And she disobeyed everything that he said. Absolutely everything. She was trying to get home. <laughs> she was trying to get home. But like she also put them in danger like quite a few times, <laughs> so I like that reminded me of that in this book. I do love Claire though. I'm not on the side of hating Claire, but I, I I saw their point. But I really see it in this one where she was just putting herself in danger unnecessarily, didn't think anything through, and then she thought she thought it through, but she didn't. Yeah, well, well, was, especially when they weren't even. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Good. <laughs> especially like she was doing all that too when they're not even hurting her or like being mean to her, you know. So it's like. Yeah. Girl, you're fine. Stay on the boat. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. Same. But in her mind, she, like, is... I can kind of see it, though, because, like, she, she was kidnapped. Like, she's being held right. against her will, even though they're not hurting her. She's mm -hmm. like, I have to get back. And so, like, I can see... And that's what, same with Claire. Mm -hmm. Like, Jamie was never hurting her, and he was trying to help her. But then it's like, no, I want to leave, and we'll do anything to leave and get back. So... Yeah, that's why I didn't 
dislike Claire. And I mm-hmm. felt like with that book is so long that I feel like there was enough explanation in between for me to be like, yeah, yeah, I see your point. Yeah. You know, it's just I really dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I did like, like the people that worked for him too. They were fun side characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were. Mm-hmm. I liked his first mate. He was funny. Yeah. Though I wish we saw more of her dad. Mm-hmm. Like we yeah. barely saw him. And in my mind, he was like kind of like Elizabeth's dad in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. That kind of just yeah. like helped yeah. like old man. <laughs> That's how I pictured him. I pictured a stout, short, older man with a bald spot. Yeah. But they have their wigs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in my mind, he has a bald spot. <laughs> Those wigs, I cannot get that image out of my head now. God. And someone in the comments said he, they do it with him having his wig on. So, like, I guess it's it's canon. <laughs> I'm surprised, though, none of these have been made into movies. Because this, like, feels like just some bizarre action-adventure romance movie. Right. And it hasn't been made. None of the historical romances have been made into movies. I can't think of any old historical romances that were turned into a movie. No. No. The only historical romance that really had its time to shine was Bridgerton. I can't think of any other series. I feel like we might be going into the era of uh, live action adaptations of romance books because of Bridgerton. I feel like it's going to set off a chain reaction for that. I hope so. So We'll have to like watch it for the next five years and see what happens. Because this would be a really good live action. Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. That would be a good series, I feel like. Forbidden had its rights bought, but then she had said that COVID stopped it and then they like lapsed or something. So they're still looking for someone to make yeah. it. Oh, I love that movie too. Which one? Oh, not movie. Sorry. I love that book too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, the I don't listen to Faded Mates that much, but they're doing like their Trailblazer um, yeah. series where they're talking to like Trailblazer authors. So they interviewed Beverly Jenkins, and it was really good. Mm-hmm. I it was. To yeah. I'm not good with podcasts. I, I don't get I'm to them very often. <laughs> I go through I, moods with them. <laughs> I love podcasts. I listen to it in the car. I, I like the idea of them, though. but like then it's like I need that time for audiobooks, so yeah. I don't, I can't yeah. balance very well. I had a time where Read Me Romance was one of my podcasts, and I think I got to like <laughs> episode 100 and then I dropped it. Like it was just, it's so much. <laughs> 100 episodes is a lot. I know. It, it took some effort though. I had like got like uh, road stopped at 70, and then I made it to 100, and then I stopped again. <laughs> Though it is nice, you can fast, like, speed up podcasts, too. Just, like, you can't audiobooks. So I was listening. I was like, oh, this is an yeah. hour, and it's slow. I was like, oh, I can go to two times speed. So mm-hmm. I did that. And I was listening to it, though. I didn't know, or I, I wasn't thinking about fast-forwarding it. So I was listening to the whole mm. length of it. <laughs> and also, uh, Alexa Riley and Tessa Bailey are really funny. So I, I didn't yeah. mind. I didn't know Tessa Bailey did that. Yeah, it's just yeah. both of them together, or all three of them together. They're hilarious. Alex Riley, two authors. Mm-hmm. They're so funny. <laughs> I just still don't know what happened with them. I'm not really sure anymore. Uh, they they still release books. They just have a website. Actually, I started their new book this morning. <laughs> but weren't they banned from Amazon? Yep, they just have a website now, and their books are now two ninety nine instead of ninety nine cents. Who? Mm-hmm. Alexa Riley. Her books aren't on Kindle Unlimited anymore? Mm-mm. Not on Amazon at all. They just didn't ever go back to Amazon. Because they got banned for doing stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can find them on Eden Books and their website. Okay. And yeah. They're fun. They have, I mean, all their books are the same, but they're fun. <laughs> this is how yeah. I feel though. I'm like, if I'm doing something, it's not mm-hmm. listening to. Yep. Same. Which is interesting because this doesn't have an audiobook, and I wonder if they'd ever go back and like do audiobooks for all of these books. I hope. I was so. really hoping there was an audiobook. People to read them. Because I think most of our picks, there's no audiobook for any of them. No, there was only like a handful. Yeah. And the ones that had audiobooks were not that great. Like Flowers from the Storm. Well, that's a good book, but the audiobook was horrific. It's awful. Well, really. I feel like- at that time, it's probably because just audiobooks were just getting like their start, 
and only so many things got turned into audiobooks and they had to go on cassette. So it was like a whole other <laughs> ball game just to get them to the public and whatnot. Yeah, it's well, yeah. I don't know when this came out, Seduce Me at Sunrise, but I know they were redoing 2008, they were redoing the audiobooks um, yeah. to call them Romani instead of the G word in here. Mm -hmm. And my audiobook calls him Romani, so I don't know if it's like the. Oh really? I didn't listen yeah. to the audiobook. I just read the book, and I have like the one of the original covers, so it still has the slur in it. They have original, like with the step backs. Yeah. Are there <laughs> different ones though than without the step backs? Okay. Well, I mean, I did they they reprinted them with the okay. taken out. I think. Yeah. Without a okay. step back too. Yeah, without a step back. Not so the fair. one, that, the book that you have is the one that I have, right. and I has the okay. certain. Okay. Right. Ooh, Carissa oh, says that it's possible because Kathleen E. Woodowis are getting made into audios in spring, and Beatrice Ooh. Small, a lot of new ones. Is it unabridged or abridged? Because I saw a Kathleen E. Woodowis that was abridged. It was like six hours, mm -hmm. and that book was like almost nine hundred pages. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like half the story just cut out. <laughs> <laughs> they did that with Whitney, my love. Didn't they like republish it without the <laughs> problematic stuff? Did they? Because when I listened to the audiobook, it was in there. I thought it like the old, the original version is different than the new version of Whitney, my love. I mean, like, how much can you change that book? Because I feel like that whole book is problematic. <laughs> like, well, I haven't read it. I'm going to. <laughs> I haven't read that one yet. So I feel like there's like <laughs> to change it would be the whole thing. <laughs> That's uh, just, I know some people like that book. That Isn't also. Uh, Lacey like that book? I don't, I don't remember. Lacey, I'm Lacey likes yeah. it. I think Lacey likes it, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Your first oh, guy. Right. What is that like? Love that. Well, oh my gosh. <laughs> so young. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> what it was. I, I want to read her so bad, but her writing style is so hard to understand. I need an audiobook for her. Very flowery and detailed. I gave up on her books. I can't. <laughs> They're so pretty. I don't mind. I haven't read them yet. So there's like, in my mind, it's fresh that it's, yeah, there's no impression of her. <laughs> uh, speaking of Beatrice Small, someone mentioned Beatrice Small as well. That is our next book pick, right, Jessica? Yes, it is. I, I couldn't find yeah, the I cover, and I have a cute cover. But yeah, a moment in time well, is our December book pick. It's a time travel romance, right? I think so. Is it? I am. Yeah. Oh I think God. I just found that one too in this cover. Yeah. So they had that one at my hash price books, and this yeah. one, and I wanted the mass market. I don't didn't want the the big one, but most of her. Yeah, books and this are one's like a indie size or something i was yeah. like oh because i have this one that i thought was going to come in mass market and it came mm. as like the big Ooh, i think pretty. all of hers were published like this first okay yeah i have a couple that's a beautiful cover though right i have so this beautiful. one spitfire i think this oh, is a pirate room too and then i have this one Ooh. which i don't know why hers are like this <laughs> I don't know any other historical romance author that has these size. No, I don't know why either. There's that one Kathleen e. Woodowis book that you have, right? Isn't it that size? It's like a limited edition one. Oh yeah, but that's hardback. Oh okay. It's like a special collector's edition. <clears throat> but I'm pretty I sure Kathleen e. Woodowis that are like regular, like trade size. They're my other. Oh room, so. yeah, no, you know what? <laughs> I do too. Look, I have this one. Yeah, like that's the one oh, I have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Yeah. Guy? It's such a pretty one. Mine's like sun bleach, though, on the spine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. I do want to read more by her. And I know this one is her most popular, The Flame and the Flower, and I want to read it. But whenever those audiobooks come out, I'll be first oh, in line. <laughs> But that reminds me of um, Where Passions Lead. So I haven't read it yet. Have any of you read Where Passions Lead yet? I heard it's so problematic. <laughs> By Lisa Clayfist. So I read <laughs> Lisa's review and like he's a her in the first chapter, yep. basically. Oh. And then 
But Lacey said, like, the rest of it's great. So she's like, why don't you just chop off the first three chapters and, like, republish it? And I get, like, it's not even in circulation whatsoever anymore, which I'm glad they can acknowledge. Like, we don't want to read about a hero who, like, sexually yeah. assaults a heroine. But I don't know. Yeah, Lisa Kleypas is like, I don't want my first, like, whatever those first four, like, ever redone. <laughs> like, just leave them in the past. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. Because especially since she re-edits all of her new stuff, like the Hathaways, she redid um, the Wallflowers recently. She redid the Wallflowers? Yeah, they all had new audios done. Um, like, yeah. she took out parts of the prologue with, like, one of them when the hero kisses, like, I think it's, um, is it the first book, like, Summer, Se Secrets of Summer Night, when the hero and the heroine meet at that, like, play thing and he kisses her, like, he steals a kiss? Like, she took that out. It's not in the new version. So, like, and that's why the heroine's mad at him, like, the whole time later on when they meet again. And, like, that part's not even in it now. So, it's, like, why is she mad then? Mm. Weird. But she's redone. Yeah. Audio. Yeah, she redid all the audios at the beginning of the year. Huh. And I, I didn't even know that book was problematic yeah. at all. Yeah. But is that not I know. She redoes like, a lot of hers, like, on yeah. the fly. <laughs> Oh, like, so which, which it's like, why don't you acknowledge and like bring it up that you're, you know, editing it or put yeah, an author's right. note or something? But because she has all these like different versions out now. That is why. So, now so like, he just steals a kiss and then, and that's, yeah, and that's the part she. <laughs> well, yeah, he also I'm asked like to be his mistress in that book. So <laughs> I think that's why she's mad at him too. So it would make sense if they take it out. She just took out like a lot of random bits. Like I was reading it for um, the seasonally booked up thing. Like I was rereading them with them and they were pointing it out like that people who are listening to the audio, people who are doing the ebook or the physical, like everybody was getting a different experience. There was like 20 to 50 pages of different things, like just little random things, like things with like her boot and like when he gives her the present of the shoes and stuff. Like there was just like little tiny moments of their dialogue like taken out. And it was like, but why though? Why? <laughs> yeah. That's frustrating. Yep. That is so random. And I love Clefis. Yep. Me too. Oh. Sorry, I'm typing in our new book title. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know, because I see I see it and then I don't. I'm just like, just leave it how it was written. Unless it's like really bad, which I can see yeah. why like you would change it. But like But it's like maybe just put a note in the beginning and like, you know. Right. That this to is to acknowledge it, yeah. I feel like most things can be solved with just having a note to mm -hmm. recognize that this was right. written at a certain time and people thought a certain way and we were okay with certain right. things, but right now we're not. And this is exactly. the, my story. And if you don't like that, you don't have to read it. If you okay with it, go ahead. I just, I would rather people do that for you know, it, like, like we said, unless it's like really bad. Uh, I'd rather they do that because then there's a there's like a point in time where you want to be experiencing like a, a different generation of things, which is why we we even do these book clubs, right? You guys like to read right. old historicals for their, their like ambiance and what they're like right. from that era. So I just, I'd rather they put a note. <laughs> yeah. Just slap well, a note on it. That's how I also felt about the Native American representation here. I'm like, we well, have to remember in the, like the eighties, that's how yeah. they portrayed them. And, like, there's so many Native American historical romances that I won't touch because I know, and all of them have the word savage in the title. Like, that's how yeah. they portrayed that culture right. in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, but then so. it brings up the whole conversation is, do they inherently get a pass for their problematic elements because right. they were written then? Or, right. yeah. I think it just depends. There's, like, certain mm -hmm. lines, I guess. And you, as a reader, have to decide what you're willing to read. I think now it's easier because we have, I mean, there's always been trigger warnings, but there's never been books that have like an author's note in the beginning explaining the trigger warnings, like as much as we have now. Right. Except for Amazon makes it hard because then they flag the book when it has trigger warnings in it. Yeah. So, I don't, oh, I don't know. That. That's yeah. Awful. So now authors have been listening on their website because mm -hmm. if they even put that it's in there, Amazon will flag their book and not promote it and not like list it. Yeah, they said even like in the reviews, you know, like how booktubers will review something and they put like a little trigger warning section that if enough of that gets posted in a book that they'll flag it and they'll put it in the Amazon dungeon. 
Oh yeah, man. So. Okay. Well, more things to hate Amazon for today. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. I'm very much aware that this is a very dark book. So well, what is it? Um, it's it's one that's like really impossible to find. Let me go grab it. Okay, let's take a look at that. That yeah, Christine Monson or something. <laughs> yeah. So I had never heard of this before, but Chell Upton on TikTok, who I check about all the time because I'm obsessed with the content they put thick. out. Oh my god. Is for yeah, it's super thick historical romances, and this one's like an old school bodice ripper, and mm. he kidnaps her. And yeah, I heard it's very, very dark. So you had to pick it up. Yes. Well, you can dollars <laughs> on Amazon or anywhere used bookstores. Um, and I found it for 12 on a used book website, so I bought it. What's in the back? A volcano? <laughs> what is that light? A burning castle. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It, 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 I can see the volcano though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really like it. Mm -hmm. I like it too. Yeah, but it's so long. It's but like, like I'm in the dark historical romances to read, and like a couple people said that this one is like super dark. Okay. Yeah. And it has such small font. That's my other thing with the Kathleen Woodowitz books. They're all like itty bitty tiny. Like I can can barely even read it. It's so tiny. <laughs> Yeah. So well, even this one was really small font. I read mm -hmm. it in ebook because I just was not getting very far with the physical book. Well, yeah. it's just like this is the Seduce Me at Sunrise, and the font's so big compared to I don't know if you'll be able to see it compared to this font, like the difference. I can kind of see it. And yeah. also, ever since I got my Kindle, I have only been reading ebooks recently, and I'm the type of person whose like letters are huge. <laughs> like I <laughs> <laughs> I must have poor eyesight. I need glasses. You don't have glasses? No. Everyone in my family but me has glasses, so my time is coming. Yeah. <laughs> I've They're had fun. mine forever. Yeah, I've had mine for forever. And I don't I'm not even like that blind or anything. I just oh, I, I need them for reading <laughs> and I never took them off because when I got them as a kid, they didn't explain that they were reading glasses. So now my eyes are just weak. So I can't go without them because they're weak, yeah. even though they're not like, I don't have bad vision. <laughs> they just hurt if I don't wear them. Oh no. So I did it to myself. <laughs> now I need to buy book three in this series. Now that I know mm -hmm. it's a series. I have yeah. a tumor in this pile behind me. I remember <laughs> buying a bunch of her. Not a rebel. Yeah, I want book one just so I have like a complete trilogy. <laughs> Well, but what is the I back cover look like? like? Which one? What is the back cover? The back. It's not. It's just like a a spread Ooh. of. Oh, okay. Maybe the paperback's different. I don't remember. Yeah. I feel like I saw it yeah. and I didn't buy it. Probably. No, I need it. Thrift book still has fifteen percent off through today. So. Hmm. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait on that. Oh, I love buying. how you said like $13 is expensive. That's like, if I saw Beverly Jenkins for that price, I would drop some money real quick. But the other two were five, so I was like, not today. <laughs> <laughs> I spent like $40 on that Lisa Clay Fist book. I just regret <laughs> one. I almost did. Oh. Yeah. I was so close to doing that. I found one for $8. Dang. Which one? Where passion leads. You found it for eight dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like at the beginning of the year. If I find indigo, oh, wow. I don't care how much it is. I'm fine. So, <laughs> the paperback. Lacey yeah. found it for cheap. Yeah. yeah, I don't have I the saw that. that. Paperback. I don't have either. Lacey yeah, has like insanely good luck though. I don't know where she's getting all this luck from. I think she just like stalks every website like every day looks and I'm just I'm pretty sure <laughs> she does, but I'm also just gonna say it's luck because I need it to rub off on me, whatever she's doing. Because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did find indigo hardback for like ten dollars on thrift books. I would take it hardback, paperback anyway, right now. <laughs> me too. I don't want the like newer one that's like plain and boring. <laughs> I have yeah, like the black and blue one. Yeah. I have like, three of those copies. Exactly. I buy them and it says it's the hardcover and then that ugly cover shows up. I know. 
Well, oh, like, yeah. why don't they still publish it? It is her most famous book. Why would yeah, Avon yeah. not still have like a newer edition of it? Because right. they hate this. They, they still publish her other books. I don't know. I feel like they did that with a lot because, like, what Night Song they had that new f- cover for. I actually mm-hmm. like the new cover for Night Song. At least it's still historical romance. That just yeah. looks like somebody did that on Photoshop. Right. It's yeah. like a couple on the front. <laughs> and the special editions she came out with. I don't like them. Oh, you don't? What do they look like? What do they look like? Um, <laughs> the one was for Vivid. Oh, it's like a colorful, like kaleidoscope. Ew, that what? sounds gross. I it's know. like something weird. She has two of them. I think is one. Oh indigo? wait, I've never seen this cover in my life. What is this cover? Hold on. Is it the green I think one? One of them is indigo. I've never seen a green cover. Are you talking about this? What is that? Yes, oh. that's gross. I don't like that. No, there's That's colorful. Let me find the like, vivid one. It has potential. The one this I thought like, anniversary. Oh yeah. This, this one is the one it I'm talking about. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that oh. was next Ooh. to it. I haven't seen that like Ugh. greenish one. <laughs> it just gets worse. <laughs> that yeah. Anniversary edition. I heard like she was coming out with new ones, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. I was like. That's not exciting. No. <laughs> oh, here's an Indigo 25th anniversary one with, well, she there's a person on it, but it's still not. I'm not excited mm. about this. Like that's the one. That's the new no. one. Hmm. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Look, I don't. What is going on with publishing? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? I think she did that herself. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, which I was like, the potential. Like, yeah. there's potential in all of these covers. It's just like, they missed the mark. Well, they're not getting any better with these freaking illustrated covers. I know. I'm well, the so one that Forever's covers. doing that all look like the Bridgerton covers, and they make me so angry. Yeah, Like, I really feel like they started doing those because of COVID and, like, not having models. So it's like a lady with, like, a mannequin guy, you know? And, like, they don't show the heads. <laughs> Like, I feel like that's how those are trendy, like, why they're trendy right now. Like, they couldn't Isn't have two not, people together. I think they're more, like, appeasable to, like, the mass market. They're not, that's like, oh, overtly, like, romance yeah. books. You know what I mean? Because, like, yeah. I went to Target, and it was so frustrating because all of those Bridgerton books are in the normal romance section. And then in the back, like, literally the back corner is the historical romances. And it's like Bridgerton is historical romance but because they're popular and have that cover. They get to be in the front. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like they're going backwards of like hiding covers again, like where everybody was embracing romance books. And now they're like hiding the covers all the time now because of TikTok. We're making them all generic. It's frustrating. How many people on TikTok are like, we need discreet romance covers. And all these indie authors are now coming out with other versions of their covers that are discreet so that people can read them. Mm. Y'all are ruining it for the rest of us. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just saw that like recently and didn't know that's why they were redoing a bunch of the indie ones to make them discreet, like on purpose. I thought they were just making them fun and different. So I was like, oh. No. Okay. Well, my thing about like the indie ones is that <laughs> they're already something that you mainly read digitally with an indie romance. So like, right. why do you need it to be discreet when you're going to read it on your phone anyways? Like... <laughs> Keep yeah. the covers the way they are. <laughs> I don't know. I just, there's like certain people I don't follow on book talk, which means basically anyone who's not my friend because of stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. I don't even get on TikTok. Don't, it's a dumpster yeah. fire. Yeah. They try to cater to the non romance readers, mm-hmm. even though romance sells just fine. So. Yeah. More than just fine. That's the other thing. <laughs> like a yeah. billion dollar business. I just yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember. You know, I used- this- oh, yeah, go oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I used to remember when I would like go to the store with my friend and this is probably like 2018 and I was just getting into Harlequins like in a big way. 
and like collect them and whatnot. And my friend's like, yeah, I don't like picking those up because then people like know what you're reading because that's like a really famous type cover. And this is like the presents where it's like the circle and they have like the clinch couple in the uh, mm -hmm. the center. And I'm like, I really don't actually care because I like check out at the thing and the person might give me like the side eye, but I'm never going to see them ever again. Like I've mm -hmm. never seen the same person twice at the register. So why do I care? <laughs> Because one, one time yeah. one girl did give me the side eye when I picked up a mm -hmm. um like a like a shirtless man cover at my university bookstore a couple years ago. And, and I also had an Outlander book. I got two of them. Um I wasn't trying to hide it. I just at that time I was collecting the Outlander books and she like picked up the shirtless guy book and she looked at it and she looked at me and then she looked at the book and then she like slowly put it into the, <laughs> the like, do you uh, want to sale or desk. not, lady? <laughs> Like, do you want me to shop here or not? <laughs> that I was like the weirdest that. experience. <laughs> I don't understand the purpose of discrete covers though, because I can guarantee you if you judge me for the fact that I read romance, we're not friends. Like, so it doesn't, <laughs> like, why am I trying to like appease to somebody else? I, the only thing, time I can understand it is maybe if there are young people reading romance and maybe they feel like they're not allowed to read it, but then that kind of like broaches into a topic of if they should be reading it, if their parents don't approve of it. I don't know. That's the only time like, I can see yeah. needing a discreet cover. Well, it's like maybe at work or something, like they're reading at lunch, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I read my historic romances in my brain. Okay. Nobody has <laughs> any... My coworkers all know I read romance, so. Nobody has ever said anything to me. Yeah, That's and like good. most of us, let's be real, most of us probably stumbled on something at like 14, 13, and then like that's where we like had our coming of whatever. Because that's when I stumbled upon Julie Garwood. I think I was like 14 and I picked up one mm -hmm. at the library when they had like the, the free books to just take. Uh, it doesn't even have the cover on it. It's Prince Charming. That's my very first romance book, adult romance book. But like, that's the other thing. There was no cover on it, but I picked it up and then I read, read it. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I I never actually cared. Even later, I thought that the pictures were so pretty, like the clenched covers. Uh, I always thought that they were pretty. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, and like I was excited because Joanna Shoup's new cover. For the lady gets lucky is gorgeous and i'm like please yeah. keep those coming mm -hmm. not these annoying ones but i don't think avon is really doing that as much like the annoying covers no well they're they're doing like new ones of like their books that are already published like redoing them with That's new true. covers like the sarah mclean cover yeah that was so bad <laughs> Which is shocking to me that sarah mclean chose to republish that because like she's so like your whole podcast is about like, mm. you know, romance covers and stuff like that. And I'm just like, such a weird choice to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much say she got in it. Oh, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Which she I mentioned it on her podcast recently. She like brought it up just like in a little blip and was just like, you know, we're like appealing to romances changing and like appealing to new customers or whatever. And so she just brought That's it up. New customers. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you already have customers. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what they think this new customer is. That's the part that what like always baffles me. Romance? Yeah, because like when when I think of like a so-called new customer, I feel like it's a person that they'll probably pick it up and they'll think it's something else. And then yeah. they'll leave a bad review because they thought it was something else. And then that just kind of like is a detriment to the industry itself. So I don't understand mm -hmm. what so-called new customer you really want that person's gonna make their way there anyways if they want to be a new customer. So I just right. <laughs> it's back especially like they're, yeah they're going to like they're trying to grab like um contemporary readers I feel like or contemporary romance readers and like with the new covers they don't look historical and so they'll be totally confused of what they're grabbing. <laughs> yeah that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. I've seen this, but then, like, mm -hmm. everybody knew what Fifty Shades of Grey was about. So, like, even though it has a discreet cover, everybody knew what you were reading. And that's when, yeah. like, people were flaunting that they were reading Fifty Shades. So like, tell someone now – well, I don't know if I should say this because we're on Jessica's channel. Um, but tell someone now that you read <laughs> that type of book that's not Fifty Shades of Grey and you get a yeah. complete backlash. Like, I yeah. feel like – okay, I love Bridgerton with, like, everything i think the show's amazing but i feel like bridgerton is kind of like 50 shades of gray in the sense that people feel like that's an appropriate historical mm -hmm. romance but anytime you bring up any other historical romance like they don't have that same energy i don't know yeah no but you're right you're so right 
There is like a sort of hierarchy and elitism within a romance uh, genre or romance books. And I feel like that's one of the reasons that I can't stand book talk is because there'll be like a certain set of books that aren't even smut, but they'll call them smut, but they'll be considered like the acceptable smut for you to read. And then everything else is just unacceptable. And it <laughs> drives me bonkers. I saw a TikTok of these girls that are just like, what are you reading? And and the one girl is like, I'm reading, what, what did she say? Like medical smut. And it was like love hypothesis. Love hypothesis had like oh. 160. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and I was like, what? I mean, <laughs> what is it one? I mean, it was like a big scene, but it was one. <laughs> I don't know. Whenever I see that, I don't really get offended, but I do think like maybe I just read very wild books. Like, exactly. I'm yeah. Not fake. But, like, <laughs> but it's but just I like think... the thing about that that always bugs me so much is when they call everything smut is that they are kind of like it's disregarding the how like diverse and widespread romance is. Like yeah. everything is this one thing. And it's like, and that's such a small part of romance too. I feel like, yeah. like there, it's just such a big scope. And I think I'm getting upset over it because they kind of disregard the big scope and they just like make it into a small thing. So right. <laughs> I, I know I shouldn't because it's usually someone who's like not even over the age of 21 who's making the TikTok, but like, I still get mad. <laughs> I still yeah. Get mad. <laughs> I also think that they're all, new romance readers so that's how I felt like a lot of their hyped books I'm like I've seen this done way better but that's because I've been reading romance for like 15 years like yeah but they are new to it and they're seeing it like for the first time but I've stopped yes. making some <laughs> videos for now because every video at least one person be is it spicy and I'm like I stop just stop like it's either is it spicy or does it have a happily ever after and I'm yeah. just like I use <laughs> spicy and steamy all the time, so I cannot contribute to this comment. Because <laughs> I need people to know. <laughs> if for yeah. me, if I see that word, I'm like, what? Let me read the book real quick. <laughs> but they don't, well, I don't trust them. them. <laughs> yeah, that. like everybody. Oh, wow. Yeah. Somebody mentioned Akatar, and I see so many TikToks where people say, like, that's the steamiest book they've ever read. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I've heard like what's in that book, and I was like, that's kind of you could get something better than that. That's like an indie alien romance. Come on, girl. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I mean, I understand. Like, when you first get started, because I remember when I first read Ice Planet Barbarians, I was like mind blown. Okay, <laughs> when I first read that, but like, I just feel like I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I do love TikTok though. I will say I like that, you know, the younger, a younger generation. Well, I guess I'm tech, I'm technically a Gen Z. So <laughs> I do. You're I an don't older Gen mind Z. You're a millennial. You're in between. It's, yeah. it's all complicated. <laughs> I don't mind it. I just don't like uh, the shaming of romance. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just don't like the comments I get. I posted about the beach read and I said like, it's on a lake, so I, like, don't feel like it counts as, like, a beach read. And so many comments are, like, there are beaches in Michigan. Like, what are you talking about? And it was, like, 20 <laughs> comments. And I'm, like, that's not the point of my video. Will you stop? Like, they get so angry wow. about the littlest things. That's the and other I'm, thing I, I hate about I, TikTok I, is that, like, I, the way that the app is set up it's so easy for someone to leave a hate comment and then just scroll it's different from youtube where you have to like pick out your video and then decide if you like or dislike it but stuff just shows up on your for you page and if you dislike it well okay this is dumb swipe and they're they're done with you but you're not done with them because it's been stuck on your page <laughs> so i don't like that about tiktok it's really it's frustrating. I, I don't know. I got a lot of, when my one TikTok blew up, I got so many comments of people saying how stupid it was that I bought an Alpha Smart. <laughs> I deleted them all. But like, I didn't ask for your opinion. I was just showing you a thing that right. I bought. <laughs> when you bought what? Oh, so it's over here. Or like, it's an Alpha oh, Smart. Okay, yeah. So it's yeah, a, okay. yeah, a word processor. Okay. And a lot of people oh, okay. didn't know what it was. So I made another TikTok mm -hmm. explaining what it was. And then someone said, you didn't say that it was a word processor. I forgot. I put it in a, a pinned <laughs> <a> pin <laughs> comment because I was explaining everything else that it was. And I just didn't mm -hmm. use the word word processor. Also, yeah, I feel okay. like some people don't even know what that is. So 
Right. It's okay, not me for. <laughs> it's a, it's a, you're good that you're not on TikTok. Like I, I resisted TikTok for the longest time and I wish that I had continued to resist it. It's a dumpster fire. I need breaks from it. It gets to be a lot. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh, I like that, Melissa. Her 14-year-old daughter started reading romance. Aww. Oh, that's beautiful. I try so hard to get my sister to read romance, and it's not happening. <laughs> Does she not like uh, love stories? She doesn't like reading. She won't read anything. Oh, oh okay. So. Oh, that's always sad. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, because I'm like, this could all be yours. <laughs> <laughs> You could also have an obsession. Fair. You haven't. You started reading historical romances like a year and a half ago, so that is true. But I did read romance in high school. Yeah. I read paranormal romance, so okay. I just trying to get her into something. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, we have been on here for over an hour now. Um, but thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Desiree and Christy, for joining us. I hope you had fun. Yeah, thank you. Um, remember, A Moment in Time is next month's book. We'll announce the date and everything. I know that's around Christmas, so we will figure that out. But I'm glad we mostly enjoyed this. I think we had a really good discussion. Yeah. I had fun, and I'm glad I liked it. <laughs> Hopefully this one's good. <laughs> but we'll see. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>